Welcome back to the second video in the series. Let's prepare for the second domain, business continuity, disaster recovery and incident response. Feel free to pause and answer the questions before they are revealed. Do refer to the explanation to have clear concepts on the topic. Question 1. What components are commonly found in an incident response plan? A. Preparation, detection and analysis, containment and eradication, and post-incident activity. B. Preparation, detection and analysis, isolation and eradication, and post-incident activity. C. Preparation, identification and analysis, containment and recovery, and post-incident evaluation. Or D. Planning, monitoring, containment and eradication, and post-incident response. The correct answer is A. Preparation, detection and analysis, containment and eradication, and post-incident activity. Explanation, as per the ISC-2 literature, the components commonly found in an incident response plan are preparation, detection and analysis, containment and eradication, and post-incident activity. Question 2. What is the first step in incident response planning? A. Identify critical data and systems. B. Develop a policy approved by management. C. Train staff on incident response. Or D. Implement an incident response team. The correct answer is B. Develop a policy approved by management. Explanation, as per the paragraph, the first step in incident response planning is to develop a policy approved by management. Question 3. What is the purpose of practicing incident identification as part of incident response planning? A. To prevent incidents from happening. B. To detect incidents early. C. To identify the attacker. Or D. To document lessons learned after the incident. The correct answer is B. To detect incidents early. Explanation, as per the paragraph, one of the components of incident response planning is to practice incident identification as part of the preparation phase to detect incidents early. Question 4. What is the purpose of documenting lessons learned as part of post-incident activity? A. To identify evidence that may need to be retained. B. To identify critical data and systems. C. To train staff on incident response. Or D. To improve future incident response effectiveness. The correct answer is D. To improve future incident response effectiveness. Explanation. As per ISC Square material, one of the components of post-incident activity is to document lessons learned to improve future incident response effectiveness. Question 5. What is the purpose of the detection and analysis phase of incident response? A. To protect life, health and safety. B. To reduce the impact of the incident. C. To prioritize incident response. Or. D. To gather evidence. The correct answer is C. To prioritize incident response. Explanation As per ISC Square material, the purpose of the detection and analysis phase of incident response is to prioritize incident response. Question 6. What is the purpose of the containment, eradication, and recovery phase of incident response? A. To gather evidence. B. To restore normal operations as soon as possible. C to identify the attacker. Or D. To choose an appropriate containment strategy. The correct answer is B. To restore normal operations as soon as possible. Explanation, as per ISC Square material, the purpose of the containment, eradication, and recovery phase of incident response is to restore normal operations as soon as possible. Question 7. What is the importance of identifying roles and responsibilities in incident response planning? A. To ensure that everyone knows their job in the incident response process. B. To prevent incidents from happening. C. To reduce the impact of the incident. Or. D. To choose an appropriate containment strategy. The correct answer is. A. To ensure that everyone knows their job in the incident response process. Explanation. As per the ISC Square study guidelines, 
One of the components of incident response planning is to identify roles and responsibilities to ensure that everyone knows their job in the incident response process. Question 8. What is the relationship between incident response policy and incident response plan? A. Incident response policy is a subset of incident response plan. B. Incident response plan is a subset of incident response policy. C. Incident response policy and incident response plan are two separate documents. D. Incident response policy and incident response plan are the same things. The correct answer is B. Incident response plan is a subset of incident response policy. Explanation As per the ISC Square Study Guidelines, the incident response policy should reference an incident response plan that all employees will follow, depending on their role in the process. The incident response plan is a living representation of an organization's incident response policy. Therefore, the incident response plan is a subset of the incident response policy. Question 9. During the detection and analysis phase of incident response, what should be prioritized? A. Protecting life, health, and safety. B. Detecting and analyzing the incident. C. Containing and eradicating the incident. Or D. Documenting lessons learned. The correct answer is B. Detecting and analyzing the incident. Explanation. The purpose of the detection and analysis phase of incident response is to prioritize incident response. Please note that the keyword is detection and analysis, so the answer is prioritizing incident response. However, in any scenario of a disaster, remember that human life will always take precedence. Question 10. What is the main objective of risk management in information security? A. To eliminate all risks. B. To minimize the impact of risks on the organization. C. To maximize profits by taking on high-risk activities. Or D. To transfer all risks to third-party vendors. The correct answer is B. To minimize the impact of risks on the organization. Explanation. The main objective of risk management in information security is to minimize the impact of risks on the organization. This involves identifying, assessing, and treating risks to reduce the likelihood and potential impact of negative events. While it is not possible to completely eliminate all risks, risk management aims to reduce the likelihood of risks occurring and minimize the impact if they do occur. The goal is to maintain an acceptable level of risk that aligns with the organization's risk tolerance and supports the achievement of its objectives. Option C, to maximize profits by taking on high-risk activities, is not a correct answer, as taking on high-risk activities without proper risk management can actually result in significant losses and damage to the organization's reputation. Option D, to transfer all risks to third-party vendors, is also not a correct answer, as risk transfer is just one of the risk treatment options and is not always feasible or effective. Therefore, the correct answer is option B, to minimize the impact of risks on the organization. This is it folks, I hope you have learned and understood what real exam questions will look like. For more practice questions and simulated actual exams enroll in our Udemy practice exam and get ahead now. For more of such content, please like share and subscribe.